And now for something completely different. The fountain pen shootout. And today we'll be having a look at three pens, actually two. Um, I have a Jinhao X450 and a Jinhao X750, except I have two X750s. This just goes to show that they come in a bunch of finishes. The same goes for the X450. You can, I mean, all kinds of colors, white and red and blue and green. Just, you know, go on eBay, type in Jinhao X450, you'll find this. All right, let's let's start with that pen X450. I have separate reviews of the pens on my channel, so check them out if you're interested. Um, I like this pen a lot. I got this for 99 cents plus shipping. I think it was about ten dollars or something. Uh, and these are decent pens. They look good. They're made of metal. It has, is a fairly heavy pen. Has decent feel, decent weight. It feels robust. Uh, you can post them. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can do with fancy pens too. Uh, I really like the nibs on this. This is a number six nib. Uh, imprinted Jinhao. Uh, this means that you can switch it out with, for example, an Ahab nib. You can take this nib and put it on your Ahab. You can do all kinds of stuff with that. That's a lot of fun. And as I said, I, I think it's pretty refined. Uh, and the finish of, of this one in particular, I really like. I'm going to show you that up close. Um, I really like that, that effect. It looks cool. Uh, it's a nice dark, deep red with black. I also had one in Blue, I think that's the one I actually reviewed, and then I got this because I liked it even better for ten dollars. What, what can I say, right? Um, fun pens to work with too. These have nibs that are that allow themselves to be processed easily, making them wetter, making them drier, making them smoother. It's they're nice to work with, so I can recommend this. All right, then you have the X750. Uh, I guess 750 suggests it's a bit more high end. Again, also, this is all metal. I guess this is some type of brushed stainless steel or something. I don't know. As you can see, it has a bit of texture to it. Uh, pleasant to, to use. It has a nice sense of band, this one, which actually says Jin Hao um, and, and X750. Again, a nice nib. This, too, is a number six nib, so you could switch them out between the two pens if you would like to. Um, and then... Um, uh, this one, I think, is a fairly good poster. Yeah, it, it posts well. Um, and then you have a pretty big pen. Again, metal, so fairly heavy, nice to use. They come with converters and stuff, so... You buy one of these pens, again, this too was about $10, uh, I think. Um, I, I like these pens a lot. And this nib, too, by the way, is, is fairly easy to process. So, a lot of fun, uh, a lot of, of abilities to, to fiddle around with these nibs. Um, as to size, I think the X750 is just a little bit bigger, but we're really talking millimeters. Uncapped, the X750 definitely is a bit bigger. That's about half a centimeter, I guess. Um, so, I mean, there, there you have it, two nice pens. Now, the other one I showed you, that's another X750. Just a different, you know, different finish. This one is black with the shiny chrome highlights. And the other one is, is well, metal colored with, with shiny chrome highlights. That's all there's to it. Um, I'm going to show you how to take the pens apart, and I'll do a writing sample, and that's all there's to it. So I hope that's going to be useful, and I'll see you later. Bye bye. All right, disassembly. These are two X750s, and this is an X450. Let's start with the 450. It's very simple with these pens. You take off the cap, you unscrew the barrel. Here you have one of these converters. If you have a converter type that looks like this, because you get them with all types of converters, you can just open it up like that. You see, you just pull on this bit, take the, the big plastic part, you just pull on it, you take this. Here's you got your ink reservoir, there may be a little uh, ball agitator in there, in this case I, I don't have one. You got the little piston, apply some silicon grease to those threads, as well as to the actual seal, and then you make sure this is really smooth, because right now it's a little, it doesn't really work that well. Um, and you have that little black thing, you see that, that, that goes on there only fits in one way so you can just fool around with that a bit and then you have the the actual turning knob which goes onto this bit see and then you can operate the actual piston then you have the the seal that just slides over there uh, I may put some grease on there before I uh, put them back together again All right, then you have the nib and feed well, on mine, oh, maybe I should just say that I've also seen these pistons that come in where this part is black 
and then you have to unscrew it. You cannot just pull it off. And the first time you pull it off, it may actually be a bit difficult. So just be careful. Don't don't squeeze too hard. Take it easy. All right. Section nib and feed. Boom. Friction fit. Uh, it's a pretty large nib. I think you can put an Ahab nib on there, or I think it's the number six nib, fairly standard size, but but big. Uh, I I've got. Let me see. I got some other. What have I got? I've got this Laban nib, which I purchased uh, from eBay at some point. See, that's the, the same size, so you can probably put that on there. I say probably, but now you want to know. Laban number 6, didn't do any heat setting or whatever, it's, it's plastic feed anyway, so it would make a lot of sense. Let's do slides in there. This is a higher quality nib than this. And this is a broad nib. Uh, so this would be a lot of fun to write with. It's very hard. It's not flexy, but it's it's uh, very smooth. So there you go. You can do that. Um, it's it's a simple thing. You just put that back together. There is no groove or something, so the nib will not be kept in place in any way. So here we go with the the, the rule of thumb again. Align the um, shoulders of the the feed and the shoulders of the nib. So don't do this because then the nib will scrape across the paper. Don't do this because then you will not get any ink feed into your pen. Roughly this. But you can also do that. You can also do this. I mean you can you can figure you know fiddle around a bit with that and, and find whatever works best for you. Um, only fits in one way. I'm not sure why you can see that but uh, a, a part of the uh, inside of the section is actually broader, that's where the nib goes. It won't fit in any other way, so if, it, if, it, if you feel any resistance, you're doing it wrong. And there you go. Slides in there, and we're done. Alright, now we have a, an X750. Um, you see there are some you know, similarities, maybe the shape of the pen or something. Um, you cannot change out parts, the, 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 the cap will not fit on there, and that's okay. Um, Unscrew the barrel, again that same converter type, I won't have to show you how to take that apart because I already have. Nib and feed, same thing, you just pull them out, and you get this interesting looking feed there. It's a pretty interesting feed, I mean those feeds, I've seen a lot before, but this is a, a fairly new one for me. Um, good thing about this, you can really clean it up, uh, you know, if you want to. Again, you have, it's a little less pronounced, but the, the top part here is a little flat, and this is rounded, so I guess you can sort of see how whether the round part that's for the feed and the sort of flattened part is for the nib. And here you see, it's good to show you, grabbing a loop here, you see I've, I've gone for a somewhat wrong alignment. You see I have very little of the nib sticking out. So for my personal tastes, I like the pens a little wetter, I would do this. This sort of setup. You see a bit more of the nib sticking out. And if it's too dry that way, you don't get any ink flow, you need to push the nib in a bit further, and then it should, you know, it should work. So let's see what that does for us. Okay, that's that, and then I just had another uh, X450 lying around, uh, sorry, X750 lying around. This is one with a food air nib. Uh, so this nib, you can see that it's bent. Uh, it's for Chinese or Asian type calligraphy. Uh, it's it's a funny nib to, to try out, so I'll, I'll show you how that works too. Um, again, same, um, same same converter type, same process of just friction fit, nib and feet. Now, I'm just taking some silicon grease here. Uh, just take some pure silicon grease, nothing fancy. Put some on there. Put some on the threads, and I also am going to put some right there to make sure I got a seal. So this is not the part that goes into the pen, this is the other part. Just take that piston, put it in, yep, that black part slides in place, did you see that? Pops in place, take the piston turning knob, put it in there, push that over, and you're done. Just wiping my fingers there. Okay, so let's ink up the pens. I have here one of them Twisby Vac bottles. I'm not sure whether this is a good idea. Does this actually fit in there? Yeah, you see it fits in there, but I can't get the nib all the way to the bottom end. 
All right, all right, all right. I'll just take this off. Very dangerous. I've got a lot of ink sitting there. Fill up my pen. I don't need that much ink. It's just a shootout. Why did I screw these back in place? I'm wiping my finger. I got ink on my finger. Alright. Oh, we got ink in there. And then I want to use that Fude nib. Show you what that's all about. And there we go. Okay, get this back in place. Reassemble the pens. Oh wait, I put the food in nib. Oh, confusion, despair. Here we go. One. Ink everywhere. Total massacre. What movie is that from? It has something to do with thirteen. That's all I'll say. All right, I think it's time to do some writing. All right, so here we go with the Jin Hao X450 with a fine or medium nib. I've made this nib drier, I've made it wetter for videos, I've smoothed it, um, so it's not exactly how you would get this from the factory, but the good thing is, and that's what I'm trying to say, you can fool around with these nibs quite a lot, so, you know, have fun with them. Um, right now, I made it right the way I like it to write, which is fairly wet, uh, the ink is um, Gerber, I should probably say this, otherwise I get a million questions, uh, Bleu Pervenche, the Quick Brown Fox, jumps over the Lazy Dog. Uh, as far as I know, the nib was a bit scratchier when I got it, but as I said, I smoothed it out, it was easy, it was just a few minutes of work, so I'm not sure whether this is what you would get out of the box, but it's it's a nice pen. Wetness, I've worked on that too, um, but now it's, as you can see, it's it's pretty wet. It really flows well. Um, as to flex, well, you can get a little bit out of there, uh, which is nice. And that's pretty much all about this pen. Now, when it comes to the larger brother, the X750, same deal, I, I work with the nib a bit. One big difference is the section. The X450 has these sort of grip facets on the section, which I don't mind, but after a while I think they can get a little bit uh, annoying. The X750 has a smooth section, which I find a little more, bit more pleasant to use. This, ni this uh, um, nib is finer, I'll call this a fine, same ink of course. Um, the nib is also a bit drier. I mean it's still wet, but I get the feeling it's a bit drier. It's also finer, so that, that makes sense. Less ink is used. Uh, then we have some maybe some wetness test. You can see it's wet, a drop of ink just flying by. Um, flex. It feels to me a little less flexy than the X450. Okay, now if interesting line variation is what you need, you should get one of those Fude nibs. They look like bent nibs. They are made for uh, Asian calligraphy. Uh, stuff, which I suck at. Um, so here we just have a Fude nib. Now if you keep that, you know, I'm, I'm really holding that at a 90 degree angle to the paper right now. Um, then what you get is... Whoa! That's a lot of ink. Uh, that's not what you should be getting. Uh, and this is that Fude I guess I didn't wipe the section well enough. Jin Hao. Okay, food and nib. So you say, well, that looks like a fine nib, and I don't use my pen like this, and hold it at a 90 degree angle. Uh, so what's the point? Well, the point is that if you move down, so if you make the angle 
less steep. And you get this really, really broad. Yeah, and this is just a paintbrush. And that's what Fude means, and that's what Fude is meant to be used at. So if you need to lay down a lot of ink in a few seconds of time, then what you get is a Fude nib. I mean, this is a lot of ink, and it just keeps going and going, as you can see. So you can cover a page in a few minutes, which is quite cool. Now, I don't see you using this under normal circumstances, sorry, uh, for a shopping list. I mean, I don't see you going like carrots, uh, B17 bomber, or stuff. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not how you're going to be doing this. But it is a lot of fun if you, I mean, if you need to add some stuff to your signature or whatever, uh, or you know, you just want to uh, fool around a bit, it's a nice pen. Of course you have a converter so you can just squeeze out some more ink into the feed if you really need to get that ultra wet line. Um, it's just a fun pen. This is fun stuff. These are toys to play around with. And that's all there's to it. So, um, the X450, the X750, uh, the somewhat more expensive brother and the somewhat cheaper brother. Hope you like them. Uh, I think these are really nice pens for the price, uh, metal bodies and all. So, um, that's all there's to it. And uh, I'll see you later. Bye bye.